common filter implementation for six DOF IMUs. Uh, if you remember from last time, part two, um, we developed a complementary filter to estimate the angles, a very simple one. Again, I'm using MATLAB. And uh, what we're going to do this uh, in this part is we're going to develop a common filter. Now, a little bit of background. Uh, I'm not going to cover all the theory involved in a, in a common filter. I'm just going to show you the implementation for it. Um, and there's a couple of things that we've got to consider. First of all, uh, a common filter is a, it's a matrix uh, linear algebra optimal estimator. And one of the challenges that we have in, in doing Arduino programming uh, is that uh, you can't really do uh, a matrix, uh, two-dimensional matrix in, in Arduino very, very well. Um, so we're going to have to do some tricks to get around that. Uh, but um, but I'll, and I'll show you I'll show you both the matrix form and then I'll show you the what I call the scalar form that that's implemented in real time. Um, the MATLAB code that I'm going to show you will will show both. Um, so let's go over to the MATLAB code now. Go over there. Uh, a quick review. The here's the gyro code that I presented the initialization and then we did the complementary filter uh, initialization. Uh, just like, like the complementary filter, there are a couple of terms, number of terms that we're going to have to initialize for the common filter. We're going to initialize a state vector, and the state in this case is going to, there are going to be two states. The first state is going to be the angle that we're trying to estimate, or roll. The second state is going to be the, uh, turns out it's the gyro drift, um, and that'll be the second state. Uh, the the next thing we have in the common filter is the covariance matrix, and that's that gives us an indication of how how well we're doing with our state estimate, our, our estimate of the state. We need a, a two-dimensional uh, vector for the uh, common gain, and uh, this is analogous to the gain for the, the fixed gains that we have up here on the complementary filter, but one of the powers about a common filter is that uh, as noise increases or as uh, parameters change, the common can optimally adjust itself, and that's, a, that's pretty powerful. Um, phi is the state transition matrix. We need to be able to propagate the state forward in time. Um, and uh, psi is, is called the control um, transition matrix. It's going to allow us to bring in the uh, the gyro information when we propagate the state forward. R is the measurement noise. The measurement in this case, we're going to, in the concept of a common filter, the measurement is going to be the accelerometer correction to, uh, to the gyro drift problem. Um, Q is the process noise. That is the, uh, that reflects the accuracy of our, our state model. Uh, finally, there's the observation matrix, or H matrix, and that's a two-dimensional matrix as well. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into the details of the, of the theory on that, um, but there are a lot of great sources out there for that. But let me, I'm focusing today on the implementation, so let's, let's go through and look at the implementation. Um, here's where the common filter code starts. Um, I'm sorry. It starts right here. Uh, we're going to use a common filter to estimate roll and gyro bias. We're going to implement it in a scalar form versus the matrix form for uh, our Arduino implementation later. That's the whole purpose for doing this rapid prototyping is to make sure we can get the concept working. Uh, now I have commented lines in here to show the matrix implementation for reference because one, one experiment you might want to do on your own is run it in uh, matrix form. Make sure you get the Make sure you get the same answer, uh, understand that real well, then you can actually multiply out the terms to get uh, the scalar form. So let me show you what I mean. Um, first of all, uh, the, the first thing we have to do is take the state from the previous uh, time interval and propagate it forward using the state transition matrix V and the, con the control uh, transition matrix Psi. So, uh, but this still doesn't have information about the, uh, 
the bias correction that will information that will introduce from the accelerometer. So what we do is we call this the uh, the state at time k k plus one minus um, the uh, information from the accelerometer yet. So we take the, the the state at time k, we propagate it to time k plus one, but we don't. But it's minus the information from the accelerometer. So in, in matrix form, the equation would be this. And if you take the, the, uh, the individual terms and you multiply them out for this problem, you'll get these two scalar equations that are the same as this matrix equation here. Um, so I'll leave that to, each, uh, to the viewer to, to multiply those out in each of these cases. But but nonetheless, that's but I've given you the common filter equations and then the scalar versions of those for Arduino implementation. Okay, uh, let me back up just a minute and show you the the two measurements that will be coming in. The first is the is kind of the the gyro control that comes in right here. The second is going to be the what we'll actually call the common filter measurement, and that appears that will appear a little bit later down down here. But that's the, the gyro, I'm sorry, the accelerometer uh, measurement that comes in to help to correct the gyro drift. All right, so we propagate the state forward. We then propagate the covariance forward, and, we, and this is the algorithm for it, and this is the scalar version of that in this, for this particular case. The next thing we do is we have to calculate the common gain, and it's it's in two parts. Uh, I like to split it up into this one part here and then bring that in there uh, this, with this S term. But the, so the algorithm for the common gain is this equation right here, but you have to calculate S first up here and get that by multiplying it out. Uh, so that gives you the, the two common gains right here. Um, now we're going to take, now that we know the common gain, we're going to take the accelerometer information here, and we're going to correct, we're going to update that xk1 minus with this information from the accelerometer, and, and we're going to uh, get a drift corrected, uh, gyro drift corrected uh, angle estimate. And so that's what this guy gives us. Now our second state in the state vector here is the gyro drift um, and that, that um, gyro bias there we, uh, we've got right here that we're estimating. The final step is to uh, update the covariance. Now, the, now uh, we, we would expect that once we bring in new information from the, um, from the accelerometer that our our uncertainty about the state should shrink. So we have to take that shrinkage back out, and that's what this algorithm does here. So then we store the data in our data array, and then finally, we have to reset uh, values for our next iteration of our loop. And for the um, complementary filter, it's these guys. And for the common filter, it's, it's we have to reset the state and the covariance for the next iteration. And then we plot the results. So let's see what happens when we do this now. And we'll look at the true role. We'll look at the complementary estimated role. And we'll look at the common filter estimated role. We'll run that. And here's our plot. Let's see if I can expand it. And when I zoom in, that same area, because that's interesting. We see that the common filter does really well in this case with this, this set of parameters. Uh, this has the original gains for the complementary filter. Now I said that we can we can increase the the gain associated with the uh, the second term, the accelerometer information, but that'll that'll move it up here, but it'll be noisy. But let's go ahead and do that. And we'll we'll go back to a ninety percent and then a ten percent. We'll run it again, and we expect this to track the common filter and the truth pretty well. And I'll zoom in on that same area for grins, and we'll see. Yeah, they all they 
the complementary filter does, does surprisingly well. It does really well. Um, the common filter just happens to do a little better in this case. It's a little, a little bit quieter. But um, I want to point out that that is one line of code. It is, it is so slick. Just it's very simple for real time use. Whereas the common filter is quite a number of lines of code, maybe only 10 or 15, but still it's it's a number of lines of code. So it's more processing time. And remember, we're only doing this for one dimension. So we've got to do this you know, for three dimensions in a, in a roll pitch yaw IMU. Um, try to quickly talk about a couple of those parameters. I'm, I already discussed one in the complementary filter. I, I mentioned there are these two gains that you can go around and play with and, and trade off accuracy versus noise issues. Um, and I mentioned in the common filter that, that here that you can that you can experiment with. One is you can you can these are basically knobs. You can turn the knob on the measurement noise, the R value here, and you can turn the knob on the process noise. And those will do similar things to what these do, except that these stay fixed in all time. You you're changing kind of the boundaries from which the the calming gain can stay within. So a little bit different concept, but it does some of the same kinds of things. But I'll leave it up to the viewer to play around those and try different things and see what happens and to study the theory a little more because we just don't have time to cover that in, in here. So that wraps it up for part three. I'll, I'll spend a couple seconds here just showing you the code so you can take screenshots if you want. Uh, the code per, per video. So there's the, the first part of it. I'll zoom down. Here's the second part if you want to take a screenshot. Go down to this, say this part here, another screenshot. And if you want to see how the final plotting and stuff is done, there's, there's that screenshot. So thanks for watching. And the next series will be talking about how we actually take the complementary and the common filter and implement those in a real-time IMU and see what happens. Thanks for watching.